by Nigeria, the right to self-determination is guaranteed. And so, it is not a criminal offense to demand for self-determination. But what is important for those who are asking for the disintegration or balkanization of Nigeria is to look around and study the environment very well. And particularly the African experience. And take cognizance of the interests of the totality of Nigerians. For me, it is very convenient for the three major ethnic groups in Nigeria to talk of, oh, we're going to stay on our own. We want to go. You also have to recognize the fact that there are about 250 ethnic groups in the country. And so we must carry everybody along so that you don't have a lot of wars which has been the experience with some African countries. Today, Somalia is the most homogeneous country in Africa. Over 85% speak the same language, the same culture, the same religion. Yet, since the 80s, that country has been involved in a number of civil wars because members of the ruling class, you know, cannot agree on the way forward for the country. Uh, Sudan broke away from northern Sudan in 2011. Again, the country has been fighting a war. And when you look at even smaller countries in Africa, you will appreciate that in spite of the monumental challenges Confronting Nigeria, some of those countries are not doing better in any area of human development. So you must recognize the fact that even here, among the ethnic groups, some subnational groups are simply saying, we're not going to go along with you. Take the Southwest, for instance. <laughs> the indigenous people in Lagos are saying, Gedebe Lekowa, we're on our own. If you are going to break up Nigeria, we'll not go with you. You also have the job people in those states saying, no, 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 don't force us to recite the Yoruba anthem. So you have to take all this into cognizance. But what the federal government must realize is that you cannot force unity at all cost. And so section 2 and 2 of the constitution, the, of the section 2 of decree number 24 of 1999 that prescribed that Nigeria shall remain an indissoluble and indivisible entity. It's arrogant. Those who that they are, are simply arrogant. Those who are asking for a breakup of the country must be persuaded by the government. The government must enter into dialogue with them. You must enter into a meaningful dialogue with them to convince them why it is more advantageous to remain in Nigeria as opposed to balkanization. But you can't wage a war on a people who believe that they are entitled to, to separate from the country. I've therefore continued to insist that the government must engage all separatist groups in the country. After all, after all, the federal government are then trying to dialogue with militants terrorists and bandits <laughs> you know and so what 
prevents you from also sitting down with the young people who are asking for their own countries. What other countries do is to allow referenda regularly. Even the former colonial master of Nigeria, the United Kingdom, allows, you know, referendum from time to time. Uh, at least for the people of Scotland. In Canada, the people of Quebec are given the opportunity once in about four or five years. Do you want to remain part of Canada or you want to have your own country? So it shouldn't be... It's, it's, it shouldn't be an impossibility to entrench in the Constitution a referendum. Yeah. One of the for me, reasons cited. For me, the demand for separatism or demand for the disintegration of the country is a challenge to the ruling class to fix the problems confronting the country. To harness our enormous, abundant human and natural resources towards promoting the equitable distribution of the resources of the country, equitable distribution of, of the commonwealth, so that everybody will be taken care of. But once you practice a government of a exclusion once you practice and engage in lopsided appointments or implement policies that alienate the majority of people you cannot but have you know separatist demands cutting the head is not the medicine for headache if young people who never witnessed the civil war who were never taught anything about the civil war demand for their own republic you don't tell them of arrogantly because it's not their fault that you have exercised history from your syllabus schools you know syllabus in that school you know so i, I think the government will have to be humble to appreciate that mistakes